Hey, everybody. I, thank you. Yep, I, I know what you're thinking. Who is that old guy? Well, I'll answer that question in a second. Who is, who am I? Is that supposed to make it go? There we go. Um, I've, been, I've been interested in augmented reality literally since 1971. Who here was alive in 1971? Okay, well, I was in fifth grade, and there was an article in uh, Popular Science about Ivan Sutherland and something called the Sword of Damocles. And I read that, and I said, someday I'm going to be working in augmented reality. And it only took me 45 years, and for you millennials, that means I'm 56. Uh, so uh, I've been doing it for about six years, and uh, which means EPRI's been doing it for about six years. And I'm going to go over uh, some of what we see possible with IoT, Business 4.0, uh, Smart Cities, Augmented Reality, and the intersection, kind of in the context of some of the stuff we're doing. So a little bit about uh, EPRI, we're a 501c3 for the public good corporation, which means all of our research has to benefit you, the public. Our goal is to provide safe, reliable, affordable, and environmentally responsible electricity. I swear to, swear to God, I'm gonna go through this fast. Okay, so three key aspects of EPRI. First off, we're independent. We don't, uh, we don't take, you know, um, we don't take uh, instructions from anybody. We we go in, we do the we do the results, and then we publish the data. Everything we do is fact based. No, there's no opinions, no policy stuff, none of that. Uh, we're a nonprofit, so we're here to serve the public, and we're collaborative. Now, this is an important piece. Collaborative means that you're probably all familiar with a consulting model where a consultant comes in and works on a problem and gives the, the company a specific answer and it's kind of their secret. Well, in a collaborative model, what we do is we get lots of utilities together and we work together on a problem and save the, uh, and uh, share the results. That way, you know, everybody gets to find out what everybody else learned, and it also tremendously reduces the cost of, of doing research. And uh, you'll see that in, in a little bit. Okay, uh, who are our members? We have over 450 people. We're a member-based organization, and our goal is to accelerate technology, which means we don't have to develop technology and sell it the way a lot of you guys do. We uh, usually, when we develop something really neat, we'll, we'll uh, either open source it or we'll license it to keep somebody else from burying it and then uh, provide the license to you for like a dollar or something. But um, we're uh, kind of a, a big deal in the utility industry. Um, just how big, uh, you know, this just tells you where we get our money from. Investor-owned utilities, we get about 55% of our money from them. Internationally, we get about 28%. Then muni, 6%. Uh, we get about 5% from state and federal government grants. And then a little bit from cooperatives, et cetera. So uh, how big are we? we? Last year, we did about $412 million worth of research. And the important part of this to you is about two, two and a half million dollars of that research was in augmented reality. Okay, another thing that's uh, important for you to understand the context of this presentation is that we're divided into four sectors at EPRI, just like Gaul, there's four parts. The environmental sector, the nuclear sector, the generation sector, and then where I work is power delivery and utilization. So everything from the, uh, the step-up transformer at the power station to your toaster, is, is kind of our bailiwick, so we do the energy uh, utilization uh, and also information communication, cyber technology, and, and that's the area where I work. So what's the big deal about smart cities? Why do smart cities have to be so smart? Well, there's going to be a heck of a lot of them coming up, and what I mean is a heck of a lot of cities. And more and more people are going to be living in these cities, and they're going to expect some sort of level of service in those cities, but just by the vast numbers of people, this is going to be a huge undertaking. The neat thing about utilities is that we have some experience in going into everybody's house and doing stuff with them. So uh, uh, we're living in a more connected world, and I, I took this from a lady named uh, Tori Gunderson, Department of Commerce, just to give her some, some props here. So 
this is just a, kind of a, a, a touchy-feely thing about the number of con connected devices and kind of comparatively where, where they are. But the next slide here is gonna really show you. So this is, this is connected devices within smart cities. And I tried to make this better, more visible, but you can see along the bottom, it goes from 2015 to 2018. And you can see that by next year, we're gonna be at close to 3.5 billion connected devices. And that's a lot of connected devices. And where are they all gonna lie? A lot of them are gonna be in commercial buildings, smart commercial buildings. Utilities are already in smart commercial buildings. They're gonna be in smart homes. Utilities are already in smart homes. And what do I mean by in? It means in a lot of these smart commercial buildings, we're already talking to the building, saying how, mu how much electricity are you using? How much are you gonna need in the next 10 minutes? So we're talking to them, maybe even sending them signals, hey, how about you turn off a bank of elevators and help us out here, lowering the overall, the overall demand. Transportation, we do a lot of work with electric vehicles. The utility industry is very big on electric vehicles because after all, they sell electricity. Uh, so they're very, uh, very bullish on that. And then you see utilities there, public service, others, and healthcare. We're also in, believe it or not, believe it in healthcare. We do research on the health and welfare of utility workers, which pretty much defines the health and welfare of any kind of outdoor workers. So, and we use augmented reality there, and I'll be explaining that in a minute. So if you see all of these, pretty much the only thing we don't really touch extensively is public service and others. So utilities are involved in all these different programs. All right, so the next section we're gonna talk about utilities and smart cities. We're gonna cover some of these areas. This is one of those deals where I started off, if you've ever done one of these things, you always think, oh, how am I gonna fill 15 minutes? And then you put all the slides together and you have like 230 slides, and then you gotta start throwing them out. So um, we're not gonna hit everything, but we're gonna hit some of the, the high spots that I have personal details on. So things, Internet of Things, what does that mean? Well, utilities have a lot of things out there. You drive down the road, you look up, you see all kinds of things, you have no idea what they are, but they have something to do with your electric utility. So <clears throat> for the purposes of trying to get your head around this, I've categorized them into, into three different sections. First, passive assets. Assets that are owned by the, by the utility, they can maybe take part in smart cities by providing a physical platform for devices, but they don't actually interact with the customers, the utilities, or anybody else. Then there's semi-active assets. An example is poles and uh, conductors. Semi-active assets, these can facilitate non-utility smart, smart cities applications, but are not providing tech intelligence or capabilities. So this is like taking the existing, uh, the existing utility assets in their existing configuration and using those. Then active assets, assets that belong to a utility that can actively participate in smart cities. So things like smart meters and, and other devices that you see out on the poles, believe it or not, they have, uh, most of those have CPUs in them. Most of those CPUs are way oversized for what the utility is asking them to do. For instance, the smart meter on your house is sitting there doing nothing pr pretty much 90% of the time. So this is all gonna generate a lot of big data. Well, utilities have experience in, in big data too. Just thinking about smart meters. Once upon a time, your meter was read every month if you were lucky, a lot of times it was estimated. So you get about 720, uh, you get about 12, 12 uh, readings a year. Then you go to hourly, 720 a month, but that, translates into an almost 72,000% increase in the amount of data. Now, truth be told, they don't read them. They, they may read them once hourly. They'd ca they can read them hundreds of times a second. They just don't because we don't know what to do with that data yet. And utility data is unique. If you think about it, if you go to the store and um, you're, you go to Costco to buy a lamp, that you, you saw advertised, they don't have the lamp, you get a rain check, you come back. You plug in your hair dryer and you turn it on, you expect instantaneously that somebody out there is gonna generate electrons to go through your hair dryer. 
the electric utility industry is the only industry where we produce the exact right amount of, of saleable goods simultaneous with the, with the demand. So the demand goes up, we produce more, the demand goes down, we produce less. We don't go to the back, get another bucket of electrons and dump them in a hopper and, and pump them out. And the data here is, is just incredible. There's no other industry that deals with the kind of data that we do. Uh, over on the right, you take a look at um, some devices that are operating or taking readings in the order of 10 to the minus six seconds. Over on the left, you see some of the time scales there the data we're talking about are years or decades, and you're up at 10 to the ninth seconds. So that's 15 orders of magnitude in data. And what's, what's, what's mind-blowing about the utility industry is that the readings you're taking down there at 10 to the minus six seconds have a lot to do with what you're doing up there at 10 to the ninth seconds. And you have to figure out a way of relating the two together. So, you know, you talk about, you've got data problems, I think I got you beat. So another, another area where we've, we've done a lot of research and we, we pretty much can take our work and forklift it into smart cities is in the area of standards. Um, here's just, this is actually, uh, let's see, I've been working for EPRI eight years. This is about eight years old. Uh, so there's, there's been some additions to it. It's still, it's still a great graphic here because it talks about the enterprise, the consumer, the assets out in the field, the uh, distributed energy resources, that's your renewables and such, demand response, asking people to turn, turn off the, their devices to control the amount of, of load. And there's just a ton of, of, um, of standards out there that EPRI and the, and the utility industry is doing research on and is slowly evolving these towards more of a smart city platform. Okay, now at this point, I wanted to mention that um, we uh, published EPRI, published a report on Friday, and it's called uh, Augmented Reality Vision Interoperability Requirements and Standards Landscape. It uh, was actually written by Christine Pere, who uh, many of you know. And you can go to epri.com, and uh, that's the product ID. It's kind of like our SKU number. So if you type in 300-201-0514, you'll get it. It'll come up. It's, it's free to the public for however you want to use it. Um, but basically, this document covers all the standards that are currently pertinent to the augmented reality um, industry, not just the ones that have to do with the electric utility industry, but in, in total. We also have another document out there that you can download for free that's basically a uh, snapshot of where we are with wearables too. I don't have a slide for that. But um, this, uh, as I said, this is going to be hopefully a, an important document in that it will be kind of a starting point for discussions on interoperability for a lot of groups out there. So really quickly, um, here's one of the projects that I'm running at EPRI. Uh, we actually have 10 utilities in it. You can see the names there, Duke, Kepco, Korean Electric, Con Ed, New York, EDF France, AEP is the, the Midwest, Ameren Midwest, Enel Italy, NIPA is the uh, transmission company in New York. And this is kind of where we are. I want to talk about two of these because these are particularly IoT and smart cities related. First off, the, uh, the KEPCO use case is using augmented reality to access some of those devices that are out there. Oh, I should say that we have 10 utilities. Each one is doing two to four projects. So you're looking at a project, my project, which has 20 to, or 30 to 40 sub-projects. So this is their one project, and this is looking at the temperature, the tilt of the pole, and the current on the pole. Um, that data can be leveraged for a lot of uses. A lot of uses, and it kind of demonstrates that there are other things up there that could be used as well. Our next one, NIPA, their, their project is primarily on worker health and safety. We're looking at several, several devices that are nominally augmented reality. Uh, the first one is the HexoSkin, which takes a look at all of these things. This is the health and fitness industry, but we're kind of uh, kidnapping it and using it for our purposes. And then the second device we're looking at is something called the Zephyr, 
which actually has 20 biometrics, and lucky for us, it has an actual SDK. We're not just hacking it uh, with APIs and scripts and, and code samples and all that kind of stuff. So actually, a week from this Friday, we're gonna be, we're gonna be showing this at a generation facility in Brooklyn, and we're gonna be measuring um, some of the uh, uh, some of the metrics on, on the workers there. We're also incorporating a device called Proxy, which prevents the utility worker from getting too close to a, a live electric equipment. So as I, as I do this transition change, watch this guy's head. Sorry, I just thought that was cool. In conclusion, smarter cities will, will be a, a great uh, a great environment for augmented reality solutions. There's no, no doubt in my mind, if I just look at the market out there for utilities and add 20% to it, it's just huge. The parallels between smart cities and smart grids are, are gonna make utility solutions to be in the forefront of things. In other words, we're already there, we're already got the communication infrastructure in place, we have the devices in place, we have the CPU space in place, all we gotta do is start using them. EPRI's engaged in literally dozens of projects that are applicable to smart cities, maybe even hundreds. And then smart cities include all the uh, aspects of utility operations, so anything that you, know, you need to do in a utility, you're gonna need to do for smart cities. So, Having said that, um, I'll, do we have time for a question? Uh, One quickie. We're going to uh, take a break. We're 15 minutes behind the schedule. You do have some questions coming on the slide of this. So those of you who ask questions, hopefully you'll be around during the break, if you don't mind, John. Sure, I'll stay right here. OK, uh, so we'll take a break. Uh, we'll be back here in 15 minutes. If folks want to come chat with John, come chat with him. He'll be here. And we'll see you back here in 15 minutes at 11. OK, public service. Why don't you want to touch it? My interpretation of the phrase public service is police and fire. We are kind of touching that in that we are building standards and communication infrastructure to be able to tell uh, police and firemen where outages are, and particularly large scale outages. How is EPRI handling regulatory agencies with implementing AAR technology? Uh, we work very closely with regulatory agencies, and it really depends upon, you know, every state has a regulator. There's re regulators at the federal level, all of that. Uh, we we uh, have regular meetings with these folks, and they have their own advisory council as part of EPRI, and so we interact through those. Are you currently doing research in regards to electric utilities and their GS and SCADA systems and their current networks? Absolutely. That That is actually a bigger part of my research portfolio than is the, the AR stuff. Most of my the research I do at EPRI has to do with GIS and SCADA, or what we call distribution management systems. Okay, we good? All righty, thank you.